capacity building um, organization to which reference is made. I wish to highlight just three of them and to show what the IAP has done so far. The first organization is ILAC, which stands for IALAC, International Legal Assistance Consortium. It is a non-profit organization based in Sweden. The aim of that organization is to assist post-conflict and fragile states to rebuild their justice systems. Our General Counsel, Ms. Elizabeth Powell, is a member of that, the Executive Committee. And prosecutors will, in the near future, have opportunities open to them to take advantage of capacity building opportunities that will emerge as a result of the relationship with IAP and ILAC. And all these opportunities will be posted on the IAP website. So please, if you are not a member of IAP, you will not benefit from these opportunities. So it is important that you become a member, if you are not yet a member, to benefit from these opportunities when they arise. The next institution that has been highlighted in one of the reports from the regional workshop, regional forum, is the Justice Education Society of British Columbia based in Canada. What do they do? They take a unique approach to criminal justice reform and they are involved in institutional strengthening and capacity building. In the first quarter of this year, our Secretary General, on behalf of IAP, signed a memorandum of understanding with the organization that will provide opportunities for prosecutors to participate in their training, um, in their specific training, and also for prosecutors who have specialized um, expertise to work in other areas, other regions of the world. The other organization that I wish to highlight is the International Anti-Corruption Academy, based in Vienna, Austria. Um, its main focus is building capacity of, prosecu of prosecutors to prosecute corruption cases. And you may recall that during the course of this very conference, IAP signed our president, or our outgoing president, signed an MOU with the, um, this institution that will enable prosecutors who have a special interest in developing their expertise in this area to benefit from training and development in this academy. Now to answer the question that I pose, um, we must, IAP, recognize the importance to give effect to its own standards that it, that it developed, which requires empowerment of prosecutors to acquire and improve their skills and competence in the performance of their role in upholding the rule of law thereby ensuring public confidence in the criminal justice system. And as part of that, um, giving effect to that standard, the IAP, remember the PEP program, the Prosecutors Exchange program, it is closely linked to the Justice Education Society and um, that program will enable prosecutors to build their capacity as well. One of the recommendations coming out of the Heads of Prosecution Agency meeting that we had is that we should strongly consider short-term placements as part of the PEP program. I just wish very quickly to comment on the correlation between the recommendation um, recommendation about building capacity building and the recommendation about the security of prosecutors. We have heard in this very conference not all that prosecutors were killed in Russia, but we saw also a film from um, the Justice Education Society where a prosecutor was also killed. And it is incumbent on us, all our states, all our regions, to think about how we're going to meaningfully police, monitor, and enforce the minimum standards 
that the IAP has developed for all its uh, members. Thank you very much.